This is a morning episode, and what better way to start an early morning show than with a nice cup of coffee? This is Bulletproof Coffee. If you know me at all, you know I'm a major fan. Delicious healthy fats from grass-fed butter, amazing laser-like energy from Brain Octane, and of course, high-quality coffee beans from Bulletproof. My guest today is Max Schneider, an incredible performer, singer, and songwriter on his own, but he's also one half of the DJ group Party Pupils. He's also a fellow coffee lover, but has never tried Bulletproof Coffee, which makes it the perfect drink for me to make him on the show. Cheers. Thank you very much, my brother. I'm Riker Lynch, and this is Glass Half Full. All right. I'm going to definitely, my energy will change halfway through this cup of Yeah, you're going to be like, sure. you'll be ready to rock and roll oh, after yeah. that, man. Oh, baby. Oh, Max. Ooh, ooh. Max Schneider. Thanks for oh, doing man. this, man. Thank you for having me, man. Yes. We, um, I was trying to kind of go back and figure out where we first met, and I, I actually, it was like way before we toured together. Way I before. I don't know yeah. if you remember this. Yeah. It was at like some bar in almost East Hollywood, mm-hmm. and you were playing... You play like a little set with your ukulele, like the acoustic nights back yes. in the day. Yes, yeah, oh, you yeah. Know exactly I what I'm talking about. The, yeah, 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 yeah. And it Those was are... this, this was like 2010 or maybe early 2011. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you just killed it. I remember. I remember thinking you definitely like stole the night. Like <laughs> you were easily the best performer, and your vocal was incredible. And you literally just did the whole set with the ukulele. And yeah, it was fantastic. And those are definitely like weird times when I first. Uh, moved out in Talal and and just didn't know how to get gigs or anything. Right. And randomly, uh, you know Joby from you know British dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Joby. manager. Yeah, yeah. So Joby was, um, you know, Dylan and Taylor, Dylan Lane and Taylor Gray. Mm-mm. Well, uh, they're they're like two, they were two of my best friends when we got here, still are, and uh, they were on this Nickelodeon show called Bucket and Skinner, and Joby was the audience hype guy. Joey so, was, oh, okay. so I would I would go to their show and I would just watch the show and and uh, and and they would come to my show and like we would just uh-huh. go to each other's and, and watch the tapings and so one day I was talking to Joby uh, and I was like yeah I mostly do music stuff um, and he was like oh I know a guy that does like acoustic nights every week mm. you should you should just come to one and maybe one day he'll you know play it or something. So that's how I started going to those, and they were always at gay bars. Like it was like, yeah. and that was the other thing. It was always like funny. Like my family would come, and and uh, I remember that there was one night where it was one of the one of the gay bars. Like maybe had some like very racy footage playing on the TVs, <laughs> and my parents were there, and they were oh, like, no. uh, yeah, like, what's going on in this place right now? <laughs> like this is acoustic nights. Yeah, um, and it was, uh, but it was so it was so awesome. Those were always fun because like all the all the random homies would come out, and we were all too young to go to like proper clubs or right like that. exactly um so we would just go to these things and um yeah it was it was definitely uh, a good a good awakening to to play like an ukulele in either a gay bar or a sports bar where like nobody really is trying to listen to the music yeah exactly just, like, do something else so it was it was very humbling to start the parlor that. room was another yeah the spot, parlor right? was another one yep. exactly and then um, the, did you play that one it had it was like the stage was like 20, 40 feet off the ground exactly. somewhere. And yeah, everyone yeah. was like looking. Yeah, that's, that was the gay bar one. That <laughs> yeah, was okay, the gay yeah. bar one. Uh, 11, that was what it 11, was 11, exactly. 11, yeah, there was yeah. the 11, the parlor, and then there was one other spot, uh, some other Irish bar. Um, and he just like, like to circle yeah. between between those, um, and yeah, it was it was gnarly. I, like we, so many different random people came out to yeah. us. It sucks that they're not around anymore. They're I know, right? It was kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we played. A, me and the boys played a, a few of those. I don't did think you? We ever played oh together, yeah, no, I never. I didn't. But know you guys I, did. I definitely saw you at one, at least that first one. Yeah, no, I remember. Or and maybe one other one, but yeah, yeah isn't that funny? What a small world. Mm-hmm. Tasty. You um, now you were you did you get started? Mm-hmm. You grew up in Hell. You were born in Hell's Kitchen. Yep. You grew up in Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, yeah. Um, are you a Daredevil fan by any chance? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, I figured you had to be. Oh yeah. And you got started on Broadway. Is that correct? Yeah, that was my first like real gig. Was uh, the show Thirteen and uh-huh. Ariana Grande was in it. And, oh no and way! Liz and a bunch of different people were in the wow. show. It was all teen cast. And, uh-huh. Yeah, that was the first gig. What was that like? It was. Uh, it was cool. I. I was. Um, How old were you in this? I was sixteen. Okay. Uh, and everybody else was. Uh, was was I think there was only one guy that was older than I was, so everybody in this entire cast was like just teens, like thirteen right. to seventeen. So it was it was a hot mess, but we had a great time. And and the best part was that I played a I was a swing, which means that you cover like multiple roles, you understudy multiple roles. So mm-hmm. I wasn't on the I wasn't on the marquee, and like nobody knew me, and and it was 
And it was something at the time I was like, oh man, look at all these like all right. these kids are like everybody like wants their autographs on these things. And I was so I was so jealous of that. I was like, oh man, I just want everybody to know me. But looking back, I'm so grateful that that was like the start of everything because it just instilled that I love doing it and yeah. like and just and just and just covering those roles and and really loving the work. Being in the basement every day, we would there were like five of us uh, who would be in the basement reenacting the show as the show was going on. We had a little oh, TV really? and we would just play different parts as the show was happening. And one night, one of the guys lost his voice, and that was the first night I actually went on for my first show. Uh -huh. Like midway through the show, I went on. He. Um, they, it was so early in the run, they didn't have any of my clothes or anything. So, like, they're scrounging for clothes. Right. I'm about to go on stage. I have, like, 30 seconds. I'm shirtless. I'm on this bicycle. <laughs> they throw me a shirt. I get on. I ride out. And that was it. Like, boom. It was, it was, wow. that was, that was the show. But it was really special because it was, it was, uh, it's it was, Broadway. It was, yeah, it was, it was Broadway, which was amazing. And, and, like, in those, like, like five minutes my grandma and my parents who happened to live like I lived like three blocks from the show Oh, cool! Um, so I would like just go to school every day and mm -hmm. then walk to the show and then go home and uh, So they came to the show like within like five minutes to come see the, the, like the first performance Oh, that's awesome, but it was uh, it was special man, especially the, the swing part because yeah Nobody uh, like I would leave every night and nobody cared and and uh, and I'm really glad because that's that's what really matters like the it's wonderful to get recognition or whatever else, but I've if there's anything I've learned, like that stuff can be very empty, and right. and you just, the connection is worth more than anything. Well, and I, I would imagine that you 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 know covering so many roles, you have to you probably put in a lot more work. Oh yeah, and you got to to really hone in your craft. Totally. Yeah. Whereas other people just had their you know they had their one character they had to worry about. Exactly. So I, I would imagine you're you almost had you know double experience than the lead cast. Totally. There was one night, well there was one day we had a matinee and a night show and I went on twice that day for two different parts. Oh wow. And uh, and that was one of the, the 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 craziest days of my life still <laughs> because for some reason it was like there were all these big musical numbers and even just the blocking for one character in comparison to another character right. and how you walk around all the other parts to get to yeah. different parts of the stage and it, there's 13 kids on stage at at one at one time for the big numbers, yeah. It was it was it was nice to have to do to learn everybody's parts because yeah. When I when I went on is when it was that much more special, like because we yeah. spent so much time. Whereas you know certain friends of mine that um, were in the show every day, eight shows a week, which is a lot, which is crazy. Um, they were feeling so much more, you know. Just I, they were just kind of tired and, and and done with the whole thing. They, right. They. they like oh, I want a break, you know. I had one guy who I went on for twelve times, and he um, he would just like midway he'd be like, "I'm tired today. You want to go on for me?" Oh gosh! I'm like, yeah. He's just right. like, I'm not feeling. You're like, thank you. Yes. This is awesome. Whereas there was one dude who never let me go on, and uh. that was like a part that I really wanted. To, that was the main part I got. I was understudying, and mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, he never let me go on. So it was another another moment that I learned. I was like, I don't think I could ever forgive that guy. Right. And I will always make sure that if there's someone like that with me, that I'd love to give always give one. that person a chance, yeah. at least one. Give them. So if somebody's worked so hard for something, you should give everybody a shot. I think. Definitely. Yeah. That's cool. I I had no idea that you got started. On Broadway, I was yeah, doing man. my research and thanks for checking going out. On. So where, so yeah, from flyer, there, oh yeah, dude, I, I, take this, I take this, I take this seriously, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so from there, when did you, when did you turn like full musician? Like I'm gonna, I want to, you know, release records and go on tour. When, when was yeah. the transition? Because I know you did a little bit. You, you still do a little bit of acting. Sometimes I, I saw, I kind of quit cold turkey. That kind of brings into the question. It's like, so then I, I was doing music and some acting stuff. Like I did the Nickelodeon shows and stuff mm -hmm. and, and the Rags movie and, and everything kind of had music incorporated into it, which was uh, was great. It was like Ross and I were doing the shows at the same time. Uh, I remember uh, hearing like our had a rock show and Ross's show were on like at the exact, we went, the first seasons were at the same time. Oh really? That's um, funny. And they were so just funny. two different networks. They were just two different networks. And, uh, but it was, it was really interesting because um, everything always incorporated music, mm -hmm. but I always and I and I and I was sort of I was a yes guy. I was afraid to just do the music thing because I was like, oh well, there's all these opportunities with the acting stuff. And right. Like I would do some like just straight acting things like Law and Order and different things like that. Um, but I just it was never something that I was like obsessed with doing. I right. wasn't I wasn't loving it so much, and so it took me a long time to just quit cold turkey at least and mm -hmm. and really focus on just music and. 
And some, I think it's really important to, if, if, if you can do anything, but you have to really be able to sacrifice and commit for whatever the thing you really want to do is. Right. And so, um, yeah, it was really about three years ago that I just really stopped. I did like the last kind of movie thing, uh, like probably like almost two years ago. And, um, and I, it's been awesome ever since. It's hard to, to say no to things a lot. Yeah. But it's so important because, you know, you, then other things come out of the woodwork that you never would have thought. Right. And, and uh, yeah, so I, uh, I kind of did a couple tours while I was doing the acting stuff. And then I just really stayed with just music. That's interesting because I, I feel like especially in today's world and, and the yeah. entertainment industry today, so many people are like, oh, I'm doing both. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I, I myself included. Yeah, yeah. So the fact that I that you were like, no, 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 I'm doing, ju- I'm gonna master this one, and I'm yeah. gonna be, you know, my full attention to this one. Yeah. I admire that because you know exactly what you want to do. Yeah, man, that's great. But I think that I think that, but even like we were talking about, like you guys, for if you're if you you have a year of doing just acting, mm-hmm. then then I think that that's like that's something I would be down to do in the future, like. I, but I don't think you can do. I don't think you could do both at the same time, really. Right. I just, I just don't ever see it really working in quite the same way. Um, but I always think that, like, when Justin Timberlake like spends a few years, you know, doing movies like that or mm-hmm. whatever else, or if you're like a Lenny Kravitz and he suddenly does like yeah. a random role in The Hunger Games, that's tight. That's really fire, you know. So, um, but it's, it's definitely, you know, I think it's so, so often. I have so many really talented friends who just like do a thing here, and a thing there, and a thing there, but they're never really quite doing one of those things to their full potential, I don't Right, think. I get what and, you're saying. But at the same time, like, live your best life, you know? I think, like, Darren Chris is a great example. I love the Versace show. He's mm-hmm. slaying the game. And I know he does music too, but, like, I wonder, I, I would love to sit down with him and, and, and talk to him someday about, like, do you want to be just, like, touring or do you yeah. like just the acting? Like, it is it is a difficult thing to decide. He, he's pretty torn. I was on Glee with him. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm hoping to get him on the show, actually. I'm sure you should, yeah, man. But, yeah, he, he's um, he's pretty into both. It's, it's, yeah. it's funny because he's getting a lot of success with acting and he's really good at it. Yeah. And I feel like his, his music is sort of taking a step back because... Exactly. His act, his acting success is sort of like compiling yeah. on it on each other. You got to give but. love when you're doing music. It's like if anything we've learned from the whole lights down low experience specific specifically is that we've been to more places than I ever could have imagined, or even in this specific country uh-huh. or in then other countries. And the fact is that you have to go to those places. You guys have been to those places when you're on tour. It's like cities that that. And, and towns where they have radio stations and they're hearing the music the same way that somebody is in Los Angeles and in, in yeah. Nashville and Atlanta. They're hearing it in Lake Arthur, Louisiana as well. And <laughs> totally. you gotta go over there and give love. And if yep. you're doing movies and all this stuff, you probably are not giving that exact amount of time to go to those places and soak in that culture and those people. And I've, I've found that that's, those, are, those are some of the most important places to go because mm-hmm. those places are taking chances on putting music on the radio or putting or hearing different music or, yeah. you know, that's, that's a part of their life in a different way. So, yeah. Well, since you brought up Lights Down Low, I, I would love to know, let's just, just talk about a little bit of that yeah. experience. And I know that's a, a very personal song to you. Yeah, and man. congrats on all the success. Thank you, Do you buddy. think that the success has come... Because of is it is it the song is it uh, your team behind yeah. the song is it the story like what do you think is like the main point because you've been on you know the Billboard Hot 100 for like 18 19 weeks now yeah, yeah. like that's in that's a lot of time spending on that yeah. chart with a lot of amazing artists oh totally yeah it's it's every day it's very surreal that it's it's still doing its thing in that way and it's beautiful and. I think it's a it's a it's 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 a combination of all of it. Um, okay. Really, it really is. Um, in so many ways, some people don't know the story at all, and they just know the song. Uh, but a lot of times, the song got to the place where they could hear it because maybe somebody knew the story, and then the team is always you know they give so much love. There's one guy named Eric Olson who is uh, our our radio and just like manager dude who just like even when everybody said you got to stop going for the song, it's not going to go anywhere. He just kept pushing, kept pushing and kept going. Awesome. And, and that was so special, man. And so I think, but I think that some people who maybe just hear the song, who learn the story of me proposing to Emily with the song and writing, writing it for her. Well, let's go, I mean, let's go back yeah. to that moment. Let's go ahead. And, and, and really. That was when we were on tour with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. So you, did Crazy. you, did you have the song written? Yeah, and you knew exactly what you were gonna do. Yeah, so she, so she she had known the song like I had like written the demo and the whole thing, and uh-huh. she heard it. And she knew that I wrote it for her, 
but I had this scheme that I because it was so special to us, and it was in such a special time that we wanted to make. I wanted to make sure that it was like truly encapsulated in that moment that this right. song. And that's the beautiful thing about songs. Uh, for me, writing a song is always that that little moment in time, and being able to look back at that and know where you were, what you were feeling, where you were at, and and that's so amazing. That's what a song can become. Yeah, and so. With that specific song, uh, we would always joke about having a harp player that would wake us up at our like dream hotel room yeah, yeah, yeah. experience life. And so I uh, I got a harp player and I surprised her in the first place. We had our first date in Chicago, and it was when we were on tour together. Yeah, it was like it was the morning of that Chicago it was theater. The Chicago theater Man, the day, that is the so day cool. of. And uh, and I um, so we so our mutual best friend who introduced us she like brought her to breakfast and she was like oh we'll go see the show tonight but I really want to go to breakfast with you like so they go and they walk into the room and I'm standing there with the harp player and and I sing the song and I propose to her and and uh, it was really uh, it was so special but at that time I actually wasn't like open to the public or anyone about my relationship with Emily right and uh, and so it wasn't like and then I told the world that night that we were. That we were together, it was actually a tricky time where everybody was like, "You can't reveal your relationship; you're gonna lose mm-hmm. everything in music. Like, people won't care about your music if you're not some single, like, twenty-something-year-old guy." Right. And that was a big moment as well to realize that I kind of I took this risk of saying, "Well, I'm not gonna be able to keep that. I don't want to keep that private. If you want to, and you're an artist or a band, that's cool. But for me, I want to be transparent about this and." If nobody wants to listen to my music anymore because I have a wife that I love, then I guess so be it. Yeah. And so it well, was. I think that uh, I think that's great that you did that because thanks, you're being real. You gotta be it, real. It's about you know you have the song. Yeah. You, it's you wrote it for her. You proposed to her with it like that. Yeah. I feel like that's more people like want to see that more than just being like oh he's single and I have a possible yeah you know I I have a chance with him totally that, I think it's it's more uh, interesting. And more appealing that you did that. Totally, man. I'm glad you say that because it's. I think that you know, live your best life. If you're if you're if you're out there and you are that specific uh, artist that's dating other artists, and it's that's awesome. Like mm-hmm. you know, find your person. Do Agreed. Your thing. Yeah. But but I think if it's so often, it's unfortunate that so often as a society we are really drawn to the, the gossip and the stories and and to think that there's a lot of bands or artists who do that just so they can get the story so they can make the news and it's not right. really about the 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 whatever they're doing it really for you know but that's just a part of we we feed into it we love seeing those little clips on twitter and oh, whatever yeah. else like, oh, who's <laughs> who's this person dating now this person got divorced it's so or, funny how that yeah. is is so People just love to talk about it, and yeah. I'm I'm guilty of it too. Sometimes, yeah. you know, I don't I don't really like social media, and I don't look at it too much. But every once in a while, you catch something, and you're like, yeah. oh my god, did you hear? Yeah, you got to <laughs> do so it. It's so weird. How yeah, that works. exactly. But then it's beautiful that you know you see like the Ed Sheeran's like getting engaged to his childhood sweetheart, and yeah. and there's different people. I think it's really nice that it's becoming more and more normalized for people to just you know whatever their life may be, whoever that person they've chosen to be with, whatever else, as long as it's real, people seem to be connecting and accepting that. And there's yeah. there's like a, such a boundary that's been been taken away from that, like, oh, these like celebrity people, like they only date each other. It's like, no, totally. just people love people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which is tight. Well, that's great, man. Um, yeah. When you were, so you wrote, you write down, lights down low, yeah, yeah. you write it, you propose. When did you know, like, this is going to be a big song? Man, I think I'm, I never really knew ever. It was, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was like I just believed in it. And I mean, you can't replicate the story or the message. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, I was like, this is what I believe in right now. And I don't have something else that I want to be putting out into the world in this way. And I'm just going to keep putting this out as long as I, I can and forever. But, but especially in the sense of I'm going to play this song everywhere we can. I'm going to tell this story, tell this message. And it was I think there was such a part of me because I had been private about all of it for a bit and been so afraid to be open about it that once the floodgates opened, I wanted to just go as hard as possible and bring right. it everywhere. And so that was a massive part of the song, but also, you know, the story behind it and being transparent and being in every way open about it all. So it was uh, it was really important to, to just go for it. And there's been little nugget moments that have been like, wow, that's crazy that it, yeah. you know, like if, if the song suddenly, uh, you know, was on some TV show or like somebody's like singing it that you know I'm a big fan of or whatever it is mm-hmm. you know or or like even like I it's been interesting that's my first song that's like gotten plaques and things like that and or been on yeah. the Hot 100 or anything um, and 
that's something that I've always dreamed of. I always wanted like to have the plaque in the studio and all that stuff. And I got the first one when it went gold and I like felt super empty. It was very strange. Like really? I was in this room and I don't know if it was just the day or whatever else, but like I was holding it and I didn't recognize a lot of people that were around when I was mm-hmm. like saying a speech and it just felt weird. I was like, and it kind of showed me that you can never do anything for that. You yeah. can't you can't be like making the thing so you can get the award or whatever else. You just got to do the thing because you love the thing. And if those things come, that's awesome. And I think that that was just the universe giving me a a sign to like never do it for this. That's good. Um which was which was which was cool and and so the, but those moments still are like the little bonus moments of like maybe we're doing something right. Just keep yeah. going. Like don't stop it's going, you know. A little cherry on top sort of that's, thing. That's really that's that's really where it's uh it's been interesting. And then recently we got like this Snapchat filter that was like super yeah. gnarly. No not expected at all. And it was such a funny thing cuz like then a bunch of friends of mine were like, "Oh, now it's done a thing. Yeah. It's, now it's there." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh word, like that's it, you know?" The so it's these little these little pockets, but I think that's anything. That's always it's like those are the moments that you feel like maybe you're doing something right with just those little pockets of a thing happens and you feel you know proud of that thing. Um, so well, it's got to feel like really special to you with this song specifically because yeah, yeah. it's so personal and because it means so much to yeah, you yeah. and your wife. Totally. That with that success, that's got to be the you know. Do you think that that would feel that's gonna feel better than just like a a random song that you that you write that you're just Dude, vibing at the time? Totally. Totally, and I say that a lot too, where it's like, what's the next thing? And it's gotta be, it's gonna mean just as much. You gotta believe just as much, because I yeah. think, you know, it's really easy to see certain parts, like when you're, when you're, you know, when you when you take the, when you take the three connecting flights to get to the one city that then you have to drive three hours to get to the one radio station <laughs> to yes. play the song for the station that isn't playing the song yet. Like those are the moments where you're like, yo, I just spent the whole day coming to this, like, this place. Yes. Like, do I really believe, like, how much do I really believe in this thing? Mm-hmm. You, you, you really start to think about your time and, and your, your, your world that you're trying to create. Totally. And, and, and you don't want to feel like you're wasting any of it. So I think that that's a massive part of just my learning experience for anything in the future. You know, it's like, yeah. you, you got to really choose what means the most. And so the, the music has to be exactly that. It can't just be some fluff thing that you're like, oh, people are like, oh, it's going to be a hit. Nah, never. Don't do that. Yeah. Thing. Don't just like <laughs> don't give all of your time to something that everybody says you gotta you gotta have it so the belief has to be so deep rooted in your soul that you're ready to just fight for it for as long as you can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. That's great, dude. Yeah. I'm I'm so I'm so happy for you with that success, especially Thanks, that song. I mean, it's a great song. It's Thank fantastic, you so much, dude. and the story behind it is is so good. Thank you, dude. How did um so how did you get started with, uh, or how did you get involved with um, Pete Wentz's label? Yeah, so Pete and I, uh, I was always a huge Fall Out Boy fan, and I, um, I, I just, like, my friends and I were all into the band right. always, and, um, Great. and I started um, just going to shows, and, uh, and he just, he noticed the music, like, one of the people in the music world sent him my stuff, and, mm. and then he asked if I wanted to be a part of the, the like, relaunch of Decadence, the right. CCD2 thing. And it was like kind of a no-brainer for me. I was oh like, yeah, oh, yeah, being I'm a fan, you totally. That's I'm awesome. In. And then we did the tour with them and Wiz Khalifa, and and that was when I actually met my, uh, well, started dating my wife for the first time was uh-huh. on that tour. So in so many ways, his, you know, the the experience with Fall Out Boy just like has changed my life. And and uh, and I wrote a song on the last record with Patrick, and I've always been, you know, such a massive fan of which his which well. song was that again? Uh, Ten Victorious Secret Models. That's right, that's right. Okay, and, uh, and that was super special too. And you know, the whole. They're from Chicago, and the fact that I started dating Emily in Chicago, and I proposed right. to her in Chicago, and there was just like there's there's, there's so a lot many, of ties there. That's so great. So many ties, and it just was beautiful. Just like, and he you know he changed every everything about my idea of what what it means to write a song, like how you have to. Like there's no he just just destroyed the formula in my head. Yeah, <laughs> he like has such a specific interesting method that was uh, was was mind blowing to me. So yeah. That's cool. Yeah, he's I'm a, a big Fall Boy fan. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm. I every time you're out on the road with them, I'm. I'm pretty psyched. That's yeah, that's yeah, really man. cool. And you're I'm going so back out with them in yeah, Europe. Yeah, we're doing Europe, which we're stoked about. You know, we're doing. Uh, we're doing I guess by the time this airs, this will probably all be. 
Maybe uh, it's happening right now. Happening right maybe now. you see. Maybe you're with <laughs> us right now. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you're. Maybe you're on tour. You're, yeah. You're about to play a show. Exactly. It's 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 quite possible. Yeah, man. But no, we're so excited to be with them again in Europe, especially because we just went over there for our first time for the first like tour of shows, and it's so you guys have been touring worldwide for so long. I I've really never been to that many countries that speak a different language. Yeah. That, um, it's so it's so humbling and so informative as a writer, as a as an artist, whatever to to take that energy from a different language, from a different culture mm-hmm. of people. And when they like what songs they sing, yeah, they react. They like they, they, what what is a, the common thread of a, of of certain songs and certain pieces of music in all countries, and then maybe some that only work in certain countries. And you just realize that wow, like. People are listening to this that don't speak this language first. Isn't that crazy? It's 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 something that's just yeah unbelievable. That to me. that always blows my mind yeah. when you're that you're out there and you know you do like the meet and greet or you're seeing people before the show. Or whatever, yeah, yeah. And they they're completely you know English is almost zero. Yeah. And then they get out. You get out on stage and they sing every they know the single words. word. It's insane. It's incredible. Do you do you try to do you ever make an effort to try to learn a couple phrases yeah. in, in their language? Always. And Ryan and I always had this. We always had this fight because he's like, people don't want you to learn the language. They think it's obnoxious. <laughs> and Emily and I always told Ryan he's so full of it. Like, dude, are you serious? Of yeah. course you got to learn the language. It's like, you're not even gonna try to speak a few words. Um, and we were in and we were in France. Of course, we were in Paris. Oh no. We we're at some dinner. And we're talking about this. And I, and the guy, the waiter, uh, I was like, oh bonjour, you know, whatever. And, uh, and and I'm trying, and then the guy, I try to order a burger, and he tries to teach, and I don't remember how to say it, but he was trying to teach me how to say medium rare in uh-huh. French, and I was like, Ryan, I don't think people try to teach you how to say medium rare in their language unless they're kind of wanting to yeah. think that you should learn their language when you're in their country. So it's always cool, but I mean... One one language I cannot learn is Dutch. I can't do it. Like yeah, I love that's, Amsterdam. That's and pretty I love, hard. I love Amsterdam. Yeah, that's a hard so one. Sick. I could never. And they seem to be pretty understanding that Dutch is yeah. like their their English language. is one of the, the they're, best. They're really good. They're yeah. incredible. So. But yeah, when we're in certain like I try to learn a little der- German, a little Dankeschön, a little yeah, there you little go. Bonjour, a little bonsoir, hello and whatever. thank you. That's that's like, really it. Like yeah. those are the, all the things you really need. And then you just need to be able to put your fingers up for how many of things you want. You know. Yeah. Like two seats at a at a restaurant or like. Mm-hmm whatever, like, point, and, oh, bonjour, and then you just say the thing, so, yeah. I, but I try to learn more, depending on how long we're in countries, but then when you're doing the tours there, sometimes you're popping from country to country yes. every day, and I definitely had a moment where we were in Belgium, and I didn't know, we had been in two different cities that day, we were in Brussels, and then we had one in Hasselt, uh, Hasselt, rather, and they speak Dutch in Hasselt, and they speak French in, right, one in of the, Brussels, yeah. <laughs> like, crazy to me that one country, you know, at different parts, speak different mm-hmm. languages, and I, some guy comes up to me and he starts speaking a language. Um, and at first I just was like, I forgot which part of Belgium we were in. I was like, I don't speak the language that you're, I don't know, I don't even know what language you are speaking, right. sir. What are you speaking? And he was like, oh, sorry, Dutch. Um, but yeah. anyway, yeah, that's always, uh, it's, oh, it's it, back to just the fact that people learn the music and the language that you write it. It's, it's, fa- it's fascinating. It's, uh, it's, it's beautiful. And again, it shows that it becomes such a common language. Mm-hmm. That sometimes the words, it's the energy behind the, the music yes. that you're creating, the words that, that, that are being used as the final piece of this whole message for you, you know? And it's everything behind it that people are connecting with. Those, those words are just the, the very end of, of the, they're the, they're the icing on the cupcake that you're creating. Totally, yeah. yeah. Do you ever, um, do you ever, are you ever on stage and you accidentally say the wrong city? Um, I've only had that a few times and it's been very bad when yeah. I do that. Um, Ryan does that so, uh, more often than I do and he gets really embarrassed. <laughs> Ryan is your... Uh, oh yeah, so Ryan's my, my, uh, my partner in crime for all music, my, my, my party, my party pupils. There we go. Brethren, I love them. One half of uh, party pupils. Exactly. And so he's, uh... He's he's kind of attached to the hip with me. He's like my like I, I got my wife and he's basically my husband. So it's like <laughs> awesome. I'm with him all the time. And uh, he yeah. So he's he's uh, he's always you know we always have these little like arguments internally about the language thing and whatever right. else. And um, yeah, he definitely has been in a few cities and like said the wrong city. I look and I'm like yo homie, we're, <laughs> we're in Seattle. We're not in Portland. Dude. Like don't screw that up. The last time I really got it wrong was we were in Reno. I've only had one show in Reno ever, mm-hmm. and I called it Vegas. Uh, and I got very angry. Yeah, they. I'm sure they don't like that. You cannot do yeah. that. Don't do that. So I try to. I try to be. At least it was kind of close. Yeah, I yeah, did yeah. it once and. Um, 
Did we you were in Boston, it? and oh, I said no. Dallas. Ooh, that's so that's pretty. You know, that's yeah, pretty far. That's at pretty far. At least you were like same. You know, you can you, say you, it's a similar region. Yeah. How did they react when you said Dallas? I think they laughed. Yeah. They because scre- it's so it's like far. A, it's like a scream, and yeah. then they're like, hey. it's not like you're saying New York. It's like, yeah. where is that? Dallas is. Yeah. Where do you think we, you at, homie? It was one of those where we we had Dallas the night before, and you know we had an all nighter. Wow. Uh, oh, so you did. So Dallas, it wasn't random. You really. You had it the night before, so yeah, we were yeah, yeah. yeah Dallas night before, and then we were out partying, and then you know we get on the flight in the morning, and you go play the show. So yeah, man, it was a it was a tight one, but yeah, you uh, guys go hard. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm, I'm more of a grandpa, and that was a beautiful part of the tour. It was fun. We yeah. had the show on St. Patrick's Day. And oh my I, god, I, that was that beautiful. Was, that was a great. So that was great. the last one. That's we right. might actually. We I have some really good footage. Maybe we'll cut to it right here. Oh yeah. So um, mm-hmm. party pupils. Yeah, baby. How did that get started? I'm so, a big fan. I'm so glad. That's awesome. Uh, Ryan and I, Ryan was doing a bunch of remixes for the Hell's Kitchen Angel album, and it was before I really had started doing. So I would, I would like swap with certain producers and DJs. Like I would do a feature for one of their records, and they would remix one of mine. Mm. Uh, it started with my homie Weathen. We did the song Savage, and he remixed the Tim Victoria's Secret Model song. But I really only had like two or three of those at the time. And so Ryan would just do remixes of a bunch of different songs because we wanted to bring new life to the songs. And we're sitting in my back room one day and he was just joking about how, man, I mean, I should just have a, this whole remix package is just going to be my name. There's going to be like eight remixes by Ryan. Like I should have a different name each time. Like you should <laughs> change my name. So he just starts running off all these different hilarious names. And then he says, uh, and then party pupils. And like for some reason I was like, what was that name? Like party pupils? Yeah. I love that. What is that? And he's like, oh, it's just like, you know, I always make up these like fake dad joke uh, names for bands. Like that was just <laughs> what I've had for years. And I was like, dude, I like really love that. We should we should figure out something with that. So we literally in within 10 minutes, I, as always, whenever I think of a new name idea, like I check all the social media yes. and website. And it was the first time ever that we got everything with no um, conflict. Nice. And so I was like, that's kind of a sign. Yeah, what that's definitely a sign. So I, yeah, so we do it, I get all of it. And then we started talking because he had been just sort of my guy, like my hired gun, they call it in the, in the industry, where it's like, you just have a guitar player who's not a part of the band or the thing. Right. You just like kind of pay them as an employee. And Ryan was always so much more than that. Like he had become my, you know, my other half, my brother. It's like the Max thing. We always joke. He's like, I'm going to fire you from Max. Like I'm going to be, you know, <laughs> like he's always joking about it. And, and so I knew that it was sort of an evolution of our relationship uh, that, you know, we needed to have something together. And, and so naturally he just, the Party Peoples thing happened. We started putting out the remixes as Party Peoples. We did this Miss Jackson cover, and, and, we were just... and it's so freaking good. Thank you, man. Like it, I, we stumbled, uh, me and the and my yeah. band stumbled across it, and we were just like, well, "This is amazing." Then we found out it was you, and it was just like an extra awesomeness because so cool. we knew you guys. That's awesome, man. And it's yeah, we were uh, me and the crew before you got here. We were jamming to a couple of those remixes. And they're Sweet, they're man. really cool. I'm glad like, you they're, dig they're it, man. They're just so groovy. It's been Especially so- Miss Jackson. Thank man, that's you, such a good remix. Thank you. Yeah, it's been cool to have like the nice thing about the alter egos of the two projects is that a lot of people maybe don't know that it's the same people like in both. Right. And it's always fun when people figure it out and whatever else. Because it is it is nice to have this, you know, in, in the in the world of the music for my Max thing, it's like there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen. There's a lot of totally. it takes a village to to get you know, a song like Lights Down Low to, to be heard in the way it's been heard, which has been beautiful. Uh, but there's also with that, there's there's sometimes, I always make sure that it is always true to what I want it to be. But at the same time, when there's like 50 people that basically in the end are all approving something being out, you guys know how it is. Like, you you know, there's sometimes certain things are hard to fight for, like mm-hmm. they get lost. So it's been so nice to have party people's like nobody... Yeah, really it's just all you facilitating. Guys. It's just us. We're into something. Oh, cool. We're going to do this Miss Jackson cover and just put it out and whatever. Nobody's like, and when that happened, it was really interesting because it was the first time with anything that I had something kind of take off by itself. Like, yeah. we really, you know, we, we sent it to homies and stuff and that was awesome that people shared it and that was a massive part of it. But it was really the first and only time I've ever had something kind of like, go viral on, on its own, own which yeah. was something like you can't ever do it again you know yeah. it's like it just does it or it doesn't 
And it was really beautiful as that as the project to just like it came natural. Like the artwork is this this badass girl Ananda in Jakarta. She mm -hmm. does all the artwork still. She's such a baller. And we just like send her the faces of the people we're collaborating with. She makes them, she party peoples them out. Right. And it's and it's just the whole thing has just come from a natural world of just being into it. And that's something, it's a reminder for when certain things start to gain success. A lot of cooks start coming in and you start to have to be, people are like, oh, this is going to be a thing. This is yeah. going to be big. And sometimes it's easy to lose the the heart of why you started doing totally. it. Totally. So with the party people's thing, it's been so beautiful to to have just this this re ignition of of knowing that it has to always be about that love, and it's got to be about just like oh, taking risks on a thing and not caring if it gets big or whatever else. Just going for the musical sound you want to go for, the crazy visuals and whatever else. And mm -hmm. like if it doesn't work, who cares? You just you just were into it. So um, that's been so fun with with Ryan to have that 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 side thing that that is just sort of a creative outlet for things that maybe we wouldn't do with, right. with the Max thing and and they they work together in such fun ways and we do the party people songs in my own set like Miss Jackson and the pony cover oh, and all that okay. stuff and so, sort of vice versa like we'll play clubs as the party people's thing and maybe I'll sing like a couple of the features or something so it's cool that they they work together but they live in their own worlds right um, like the other night my parents came to we had like a club gig in OC like you know midnight we're on right. it's like a tr proper club thing and like my little like hobbit Jewish parents are like dancing <laughs> around in this like nightclub living their best life and it was so awesome. funny man um, like the bottle service and the whole thing right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. oh my gosh like not it's so ironic because like that's not particularly my scene like, totally I, I'm not trying to like I, I prefer to just like sleep and like cuddle and watch Netflix with my dog and my wife and stuff but uh -huh. like we play a lot of those clubs now, like yeah, all the time. <laughs> Some people are like, oh, you wanna go to that club? I'm like, I'm cool, we'll like play it as party people's and like, I'll go home. And then you've just bounced. I'm out, you know? <laughs> like respect, have fun, but like, I'm good. Um, so it's been, it's been super cool and Ryan is just, uh, He's, he's, he's just an amazing guy, man. You know, we, we have like a pretty, not a big age difference, but you know, he's eight years older than I am. So it's like, he's been in the music game for a long time and he has always, a lot of the time has been like the, the, the hired gun, like I said, he's been right. like the side guy. And the fact that this is like our thing and it's it's like, again, seeing this, this, this ignition of him just really loving music again and being really excited to, to be creating something of his own. So yeah. it's, been, it's been awesome. Well, that's great. I, I, I dig it. I dig it. I awesome. dig. I dig all your stuff. Um, Thanks, Hell's Same. actually Hell's Kitchen Angel might be the uh, the song specifically. Oh might, yeah, might yeah. Be, might be one of my favorite. Oh, song it's right now. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, just man. going through it all, you know. I, um, that one just really stuck out to me for some Thanks reason, for and I've been it, I've been bumping it. So. Man, you and you a proper host up in here, man. Thank you, bro. What you doing. Thank you for thank you so much for for being on the show. It's my pleasure, man. I'm glad you like that song too. That's that's so tight because that was definitely a, a weird one that we just kind of went for and yeah. <laughs> like it died hardly. I don't think I've ever played it live either, which is I was gonna crazy. ask you that actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember you playing that on never tour. played it. I remember that you still love Hollow. That was like your Hollows favorite one was my played. favorite from the tour for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but but yeah, no, a lot. It's so interesting that there's a lot of songs off that record that I just haven't played live, and I for should. I, would I, th to, I think you, you should know? play Hell's Kitchen Angel. I think the melody and the groove of it is really sweet. Strong, I think, and it leads off the album. Boom boom. You got to keep it. Keep yeah, it really. You know? Probably a good opener. I think for, fun, your, for your show. I'm glad. If you, you feel like throwing it in, especially um, if it's an LA show, I'll shout you out. I want to be. There. Oh, you got it, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Riker, Riker suggested this. Yes. You're doing this. There we go. Tasty. Yeah, you need, I'll, I'll play bass if you want. Dude, you I would be player. honored. Yeah, we do need a bass player. Yeah? Out. Yeah, yeah. We I'll, never have bass. Yeah, you should come. I'll, I'll come play a show with yeah, you. Yeah, that'll be tight. Let me know. I would I, love any that. LA show, I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 I'd love to do that. Fire, Maybe baby. Right. I'm in. Thank you, dude. Thank you so much for, for being on the show. My pleasure. Thanks I, for having I me. I love talking to you. Same, man. I love your enthusiasm and, yeah. and your love for music and life in general. I think yeah. it's great. Same here. Thank you. You're the fucking man.